Hi, guys. Welcome to another episode at Living Life at Life You. This is your host, Dr. Veronica Garcia. And today I have a very dear and special guest to my heart because we were in school together, because we ha- were in a very um, evolved organization during school together. And our paths definitely have been crossing throughout probably the last, what, seven years or so, maybe? Yeah. Uh, that's so amazing. With us today is Dr. Chris Peterson. Thank you, Chris, for being here today. Day. How are you doing? Yeah, it's it's thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here for sure. Um, I'm doing great. It's it's um, it's always a fun time to be able to, to be able to come in and, and have a conversation with an old friend and <laughs> you know share some some uh, of my experience. So thank you, thank you so much. I love I, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you here is because even though I know your story, a lot of people don't know your story, and I think it's very impactful and I think it's very inspiring as well. Um, whether whether when it is our story, we see it that way or not. Right. As a person that wasn't in your shoes, I will say very inspiring and very humbled by every single step of the process. So please tell us a little bit more. You have a very particular um, set of tools in your back pocket <laughs> because chiropractic was your second career. Talk to us a little bit about that life before chiropractic and how did you get to chiropractic? Yeah, I mean, that that journey was not exactly a straight line for sure. I, I first started out um, as a computer programmer. I did that for about 15 years. Um, my intent was just to, you know, make a living doing that. I, I had heard all of the things, you know, you got to get out of school and go to college and you got to pick a career and, you know, figure out what that major looks like and just go for it. And so I did, and I liked computers and I was like, well, this sounds kind of fun. Right. Um, and you know, it, it did help in the long run for what I'm doing now as well. But in it, you, you don't get the opportunity to kind of shut off when you leave the office. Mm-hmm. Right. And I just, I didn't have my heart in it. I wasn't, uh, you know, passionate about what I was doing. And I knew I needed to do something different. I just had no clue what that was going to be. So I looked for a while, I was trying to figure out, well, what can I invent? And you know, what could I what business could I open? What could I do today that I wasn't doing yesterday? Mm -hmm. Um, And then it sort of happened kind of by accident, the whole chiropractic thing, I had been a patient for years. um, And I was actually at a softball tournament. One of my teammates asked me what I did for work. And I told him, and he said, really? He goes, I would have swore you you were a chiropractor. (laughs) But, and I laughed it off at the time, but I went home and I told my wife and she's like, well, hasn't this happened like four or five times in the last couple of years? And I was like, it it has actually. I was like, I don't even know what a chiropractor looks like, but all right, well, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I guess. So, and now it is. So, um, no, we, we both secretively kind of went to work the next day and we started, uh, looking up chiropractic schools. What did that, what would that look like? Where are they? That kind of thing. And we found, Hey, there's one that, you know, is closer to our house where we lived in, in Minneapolis at the time than where I was working. And I was like, well, this is perfect. I could just go here. Um, through a different set of circumstances, we we found our way down here to life, mm-hmm. um, went to Life Leadership Weekend, and my wife is a big planner, uh, which is a, a blessing, um, quite honestly. Uh, she helps keep me where I need to be, um, but exactly, you got to look at the, the family calendar all the time. Yeah. But um, no, we came down probably a year and a half before I started mm-hmm. uh, just to check out the school. And she actually turned to me after, you know, Life Leadership Weekend. We had an amazing experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and she says, well, are we doing this or what? And I said, well, if you're on board, then absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so we packed up the family. Uh, at the time that we moved down here, we were a family of four. We still are now. That's where we end. But um, yeah, my my youngest daughter was six and a half months old. Oh, and we boy. moved halfway across the country, and here we are. And and I don't regret it for a minute. It was it was amazing. So that's amazing. <clears throat> that's beautiful. And I love hearing this story over and over because I think it's inspiring. I think that everything that we do in life has beautiful seasons. And you got called into a completely different season where. I mean, computer science, yes, it is a science, but not necessarily hu- like biology and understanding. No. It's, it's a whole different change. It's a huge change. And kudos yeah. to you for going through that. What are some of those challenges that you feel um, you face? 
based and how it do you feel that life university supported you in some shape or form or did you feel like you had to kind of reach out um outside and seek for more i mean i mean the answer is both right mm -hmm. you you never you can never have enough people on your side and to be able to, to pour into you and, and help you along the way. Um, Life University, absolutely. They, they were always there. I, I got started right away. You know, obviously, you know, we we're student ambassadors together. Yeah. Um, spent a lot of time that way and created, you know, some really good friendships that I, I still keep in touch with a lot of you guys still to this day, of course. Um, I couldn't have done it without, you know, your guys' support and, and my classmates and, of course, my family. I mean, mm -hmm. my wife, thankfully, had a, a, a good job and her company had an office in Atlanta. So it just worked where she could, you know, just pick up and, and transfer here. And, mm -hmm. you know, that that was huge. But absolutely, you're right. It's, it's like a complete left turn mm -hmm. from what I was doing before. Mm -hmm. Um not even remotely close as far as science goes, right? I, I had to do, I had to go back and do a whole bunch of prereqs because I didn't have a lot of the physical sciences. I had computer science, but that has nothing to do with the human body. So I had to go and, and do some of those prereqs before I could get into, um, you know, get accepted in the first place. But, you know, I chipped away doing that in the evenings while I was still going to work because I didn't want to completely unplug my income sooner than needed. And wow. then, came down here and, and jumped in and, and, you know, ran with it. So that's amazing. That's, that's inspiring guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, question, how, how would you say that, um, the university, cause you mentioned that you were looking for something to invent or a business to start and you ended up with a business after all, is that correct? <laughs> I did. <laughs> so how would you say that the university prepared you for that? Talk to us about your practice name or location, all the things. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I kind of lucked into this. The whole plan was not to still be here in, in Atlanta, <laughs> right? I'm from Minneapolis. That was the plan was to go back to Minneapolis afterwards. Uh, funny little tidbit, two weeks before graduation, uh, my wife and I looked at each other and we said, maybe it makes sense to stay here. Mm -hmm. um, and it was both from her career standpoint. And honestly, you know, going to a vitalistic school and, and having that instilled in you and, and really kind of you know, that's the foundation for kind of how I was raised as far as chiropractic goes. Right. That's how I wanted to practice. And, and the school up in Minnesota is not quite the same way. And so a lot of the practices I was looking at, it was going to be a little different than how I had envisioned it going. Right. Um, and so I had gotten an email from, you know, a practice broker that had a bunch of different listings in Atlanta. And I was like, well, let me take a look at these. And off of like, there's like 10 or 15 of them on there. And there was like five or six of them. I was like, wow, this looks kind of nice. Like maybe, maybe this does make sense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the first ones that we looked at was the one that I ended up buying. So I went a little different route than a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I didn't associate right away. I didn't do, you know, independent contractor. I just went and I bought a practice, which wow. was only thanks to my wife being able to have, uh, you know, an income that would support getting a loan like that and, mm -hmm. and you know, family help and all that kind of stuff too. But mm -hmm. But yeah, I bought a practice in Midtown Atlanta. Um, it's called Midtown Life Studio. We've, uh, I think that was a, a little over three years ago now, August of 2019. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it, it wasn't always wonderful. You know, you first start out and about six months into it, COVID hit and mm -hmm. things started to go a little bit different direction than I had envisioned them going initially. <laughs> Uh, but we survived. We came out the other side and, and we're, we're busier than we were before. And, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And, you know, having the foundation from what, you know, I learned at Life University and in some of the, the clubs that I was able to go to and mm. a lot of the, the classes and hands on and friends and all of that is, you know, it helped shape me into to knowing that I could do what it, it was that I needed to do. And right. so... As much as you think you know, you learn a whole lot and get very humbled as soon as you go out there. And you're like, you have no idea. <laughs> oh, 
there's all this other stuff that we didn't quite know all of until right. you get out there. And but that's part of it too. So mm -hmm, absolutely, I think it's it's a practice and error, and that's you right. you recalibrate and then you <laughs> repractice again and then you recalibrate and then you repractice again, and it's an endless um, right. just learning curve. Whether it is in the healthcare profession or or it is in other in any other profession, there even computer science there are systems, but you always have that at least me that I have an Apple. You always have that. Hey, you have an update. Mm -hmm. You have to readapt to that right. update right so it, it does work in in all the in all the areas I think that at least from from my experience and I don't mean to talk uh, for you whatsoever but from my experience one of the the things that set apart my my be getting into practice and associating and buying out and starting my own practice and all these mm -hmm. things was that I always had the opportunity to go back into my phone and look for that professor or that mentor right. or that person that graduated a few quarters before me and say yo I I need some help. What right. do I do with this? Right. And yeah. and I think that definitely sets sets up sets up hard having a community. Yeah, so. absolutely. You you're bringing up something that was very near and dear to the reason why I decided to come here in the mm -hmm. first place, right? You come down to, to Life Leadership Weekend and some people have the sense that it's like, oh, we roll out the red carpet and that's just not how it actually is. But that is how it actually is. And in having that set of people kind of there to always lean on or to always ask a question. You you go talk to anybody and mm -hmm. almost anybody's going to turn around and, and want to help you because that's just what this environment breeds. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I love too. You know, people come, they they call me and, hey, can I come in and chat? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let me pour in as much as I can, right? Because that's what people did for me. And, and you're right, you know, people that you were classmates with that had a different experience. It's like, oh man, I haven't done that. Let me talk to this person. Or, yes. or you talk to somebody and they're like, well, I haven't done that, but I know so-and-so did. And then you're like, okay. And you get connected up with that person or, you know, there's just, you have to build, it's a, it's a team, you yeah. know, we're, we're here to support each other. And, and I'll admit that sometimes when you graduate and you, you get out there and you start doing your thing, it gets a little crazy and you don't always keep <laughs> as close a contact as you thought you might, but, <laughs> but, you know, we, we know that too, because yeah. we're all living the same thing and, and we're here for each other. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Well, Dr. Chris, thank you so much for spending this time with us. Thank you so much for sharing your story. You are definitely as inspiring as ever. <laughs> um, please say hi to your beautiful two daughters and your wife for me. Um, thank Absolutely. you so much. How can people contact you? Where can they find you? Yeah, sure. Um, you can go to our website on uh, my practice, midtownlifestudio.com. Um, send me an email, chris at midtownlifestudio.com if you want to. Um, I'm always happy to help any any way that I possibly can. No question's a dumb question, and and it might take me a little bit to get back to you sometimes, but I'll I'll definitely do it. I'm I'm here for you. Sounds good. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, guys, for having yeah. us one more time. And um, please make sure that you leave us a review and you follow us. And until the next one, thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. <laughs> Bye, guys.